Reconnect with nature. Reprogram your brain. Regain your freedom. Rebuild your life. This is Brain Shaman, the ultimate brain mastery podcast. I'm Michael Waite, your host and guide on this quest towards better brain health. This is episode number one, the introduction episode. Darkness and sadness are ultimately what made me have to start this podcast finally. My brother is homeless, though to be honest, from talking to him, he seems more connected to nature and reality and perhaps happier than a lot of people who are on paper much better off. Nevertheless, he is living in this ruthless, power-based society, so I do worry about his safety and well-being. Civilization, regardless of how divorced it might be from the primordial reality that my brother is somewhat living in, a reality that some might call fantasy or even mental illness. This civilization controls the power and resources, without which it's very difficult to survive, much less thrive. And as we've learned from Maslow's hierarchy of needs, survival and safety are top priority. Yet it is people suffering from what we call mental illness who are often lacking in these things the most. How are they supposed to fix their brains if they don't even have the basics? The ones who need the most love and healing for their brain are often those with the least amount of access to it. That's the sad, challenging problem. Still, I believe that education, resources such as this and other podcasts and books can be at least a tiny part of the solution. At the very least, it can at least help some of those who have already reached baseline economically, socially, physically, and mentally. On top of this, my mother died earlier this year, and that's got me realizing that I too will die someday, so I better get started doing the things that I love. Specifically, embracing my creative side, writing and making podcasts like this. Life is too short to waste it with work, activities, people, and foods that bring you down. We must learn how to consume and produce in more positive ways. I've also noticed that whenever I or my friends or family or generally those around me consume the wrong things, average or even bad things happen. But there is a way out of this, a bright morning sun that I see and feel when I connect with nature, eat real food, Create a silent space between me and all the fake, addictive, sticky, toxic garbage. So who is this podcast for? It's for those who need or want to learn how to consciously select their own brain state to control the biochemistry that determines everything in life. There are so many brain states to choose from, each like a separate superpower, focus, energy, calmness, relaxation, imagination, desire, play, creativity, flow. These are all your superpowers. Take them back. Learn how to activate them or deactivate them at will via the things that you put into your mind and body. We have somehow been fooled into believing that we cannot personally control how we feel and think. It's all just kind of random, like the weather uh, gamble we wake up to each morning, only hoping for the best, hoping that we'll feel okay. But that's not true. That's what society and big business, the food, drug, alcohol, entertainment, dating, porn, retail, advertising, so many industries want you to believe. Because if you don't even try to own your brain, They so easily can and do, like oil being sucked out of the ground or rainforest being chopped down. They can extract your attention, energy, and decision-making power and manipulate your feelings and actions in whichever way that benefits not you, but them, ultimately stealing your life force, making them richer and more powerful and you more depressed, mentally and physically destroyed, average, or way worse dissatisfied with life, suffering and dying with all your beautiful magic and potential forever trapped inside you, never for the world to see. Your life is not even yours, 
and it's never going to be unless you become more conscious and knowledgeable about what you consume. You're like a desert that could have been an ocean. Refill that ocean, get back on the ship, kick the bad guys out of the cockpit, and start flying your own plane, your own brain. Without such autonomy or control over our brains and therefore our lives, we can never be happy or what we dreamed and think we could have been, you know? Uh, some of us can't even attain basic survival or safety. It's sad how greedy and rough the world has become. Mental illness is on the sharp rise and along with it is homelessness, unemployment, poverty, violence, among uh, so many other problems. And that's what brings me back to the primary catalyst for me starting this show. My brother slash best friend. Earlier this year, he became homeless. He had always been highly imaginative and creative, but never successful in the traditional sense. And it, of course, did not help that he was living in the United States, a uh, society famous for pumping, mind-numbing, zombie-creating toxins in the form of supposed food, medicine, and entertainment into its population's brains. Anyway, it all fell apart for my brother after our mom died. He wasn't even at the funeral. I didn't know where he was. Yeah. Well, so like while I was carrying her coffin, he was somewhere pushing a shopping cart probably. Now he's living all alone on the streets with a lot of other people just like him. I constantly worry about his survival, but at the same time, his creativity, thinking capacity, and overall brain function seems to be blossoming more than ever before. He's reconnecting with wildlife, the sun, the ground, and nature as a whole. Meanwhile, existing on somewhat of the peripheries of society, he's able to look at it more objectively for what it really is. Living between two worlds, both society and nature, and seeing what each of them really brings to us. Bringing into question many of society's assumptions and bringing to light many of nature's benefits on the brain. Granted, being homeless and stuck in nature is not ideal, but neither is being stuck in society. That's a paradox and challenge that this podcast is looking at, leaning towards the side of nature. Still, I often snap back to the society perspective and worry about his mental health, worry whether being out there is good for his brain, whether without the resources provided by society, he can survive and thrive mentally and physically. And then there's a risk which all natural living organisms, including plants, animals, and people like my brother, of them getting absorbed by or taken advantage of by the system, destroyed by the exact society which is supposed to serve and protect us. We cannot rely solely on others any longer. We must take responsibility over our own lives, our own brains. This is more important than ever before. Our brains are our best tool and chance for survival and success. I love and admire my brother more than anybody. I'm dedicating my life to helping him, yet also trying to become more like him. And those living under similar circumstances of their own choosing, or unfortunately, usually not. I have nightmares about how his situation might get worse. And not just his, he is just one example among millions. Plus, there are billions of the rest of us who are just stuck living mediocre lives, feeling fine, but just getting by and wondering why. Even if we know what kind of life we want, we don't have the energy or knowledge of how to get it. The basic premises of this podcast are, one, that everything in this world is interconnected in a single system. Humans are not beyond or above nature, but inescapably part of it, one with it. The more we live in sync with nature, loving it like it is part of ourselves, because it is, and letting it love us back, the better off we all will be. And two, everything in the human experience goes back to brain health. That's the key, the big domino to fixing your own life and society as a whole. I mean, it was our big brains, our big prefrontal cortexes that helped us rise as a species in the first place, getting us from the tree to the skyscraper. But there were certain magical moments in human creativity throughout history that served as kind of turning points 
discoveries like electricity, along with all the technological innovations that followed and are continuing to this day, and then knowledge of science and biochemistry, allowing us to create all kinds of useful but fake and harmful foods, medicines, and generally unhealthy products, rising sharply, particularly in the 1950s and the following decades after that, putting us in even greater opposition to nature, greater opposition to our true selves, our best selves. We got too clever for our own good, and we've reached the tipping point, which has led to this current mental health epidemic. The fake processed food-like substances, soft drinks, drugs, medicines, plastics, TVs, gadgets, news, stores, noises, lights, and many of the other useful but harmful distractions that we invented, of course not without their benefits, are now killing us from the inside out. Corporations have become more important than individuals. Blow after blow, day after day, our brains as a whole got more and more damaged. And without fully functioning brains, we are no more free than any basic mammal or reptile. We throw away all the uniquely human gifts and reduce ourselves to pleasure-seeking, pain-escaping machines. The parts of our brain responsible for high-level language, expression, learning, memory, creativity, and art get deactivated. It's easy to manipulate a consumer and voter population when they're all drugged up, easily programmable robots. Maybe you want to feel all buzzed, addicted, and to keep chasing the next high. That's fun. It feels good. And there are certain circumstances or points in life, such as your teenage or college years, or when you're on vacation or going out on a hot date, when that's fun and exactly what you might need. Even still, we shouldn't have to constantly be in high-stress, desire-seeking mode all the time. It should be your choice to feel the way you feel and be able to alter your brain chemistry and mood at will. You must learn the specific components in terms of food, especially food, drugs, information, behaviors, environments, technology, and overall sensory input that give rise to each brain state. There is a direct causal connection between what you put into your body, whether through your sense organs or your mouth or wherever, and how you think, feel, and act. You are the information that you intake in the very most literal sense. And everything is information. We are going to dig into how exactly everything affects our brain throughout this show. In a basic nutshell, if we want to increase our brain health, we need to get back to what is natural, real, and good. If you want to destroy your brain and throw away your special humanness and freedom and creativity and all that and get into raw animal mode, just do the opposite. Find the most processed, fake, furthest from nature stuff that you can find. Rub it all over your skin, binge on it, shove it in your ears, eyes, and mouth. Everyone else is doing it anyway being normal. You're told that's what's gonna make you happy and successful. But is it? Block that sticky, dark, addictive energy or keep it for very special occasions, but use it with extreme caution. It's fire you're playing with. Fire. It warms you for a second or two and then burns you for days, years, often decades, trapping you in its pleasure pit. People often stay there for forever or it kills them early. Let's discuss how we get into and out of that darkness in the first place. And on a more positive note, how to return to the light, the land where freedom, focus, creativity, flow, and energy roam. Learn how to cut out the noise, distractions, poisons, and lies, and embrace nature, silence, simplicity, reality. Get back your brain, get back your life. For the sake of my brother, all my listeners, and myself, I have made it my life's mission to continue to learn and do everything I can to help improve people's brain health. I believe that that is the one big piece of the puzzle that if we can learn how to get control of and dance with it, so much of the world's pain and suffering can end or at least be reduced significantly. It might be too late. The world might be doomed, but your life is not. My life is not. We can fix this. Let's do this together. Let's be brain brothers and sisters, loving each other, 
by fixing each other's brains. Some episodes will be solo episodes, me analyzing and philosophizing about the research. On other episodes, I'll bring in experts and interesting people to talk to and get information from. By doing this, we will slowly, gradually begin to learn how to identify and manage both the brain bullies and the brain buddies. Thank you for joining me on this journey. Until next time. I really appreciate you taking the time today to listen to this episode. It means a lot to me. And if you're enjoying the podcast, think others might like it too, or would like me to keep making more content, it also mean so much to me if you leave a five-star rating or positive review. Feel free also to share with anybody you care about or you think might need a little brain boost. Much love to both you and your brain.